If you're a 1d4 player, no doubt that you have faced the Budapest defense or Budapest gambit in the past. Many white players don't seem to like to face this defense, probably because they've had some bad experiences with the bunch of tactical tricks that black can throw your way early in the opening. However, the good news is that if you know how to play against the Budapest, it's quite easy to get a better or even winning position early on. And in this video, we're going to try to show you how to do that in five minutes or less. First of all, the First of all, let's show what is the Budapest. It happens after d4, knight f6, c4, and now black plays e5. So this is the gambit. Black allows white to win this pawn, and their idea is that they will usually look to recover the pawn uh, quickly while also sometimes creating some threats against our own king. Now, that's what's going to happen about 90% of the time, but the first thing we should know is that 10% of the time, black will go knight to e4. Now this move is a bad move, but it's a tricky move. If, for example, you play f3, you're going to land in quick trouble with queen h4 check when after g3, the only way to block, black is already winning with this tactical shot. So this is the first big mistake that you need to avoid. Let's go back. So the right way to play here is instead to play the move a3 because it turned out that black also had some annoying ideas with bishop to b4 check. So we kill that off and black is left playing a move like pawn to d6. Now we go hunting after this knight with queen c2. Black most of the time will play bishop f5, trying to defend, and already they're losing. The best move here is knight to c3. Now, uh, after this, almost always, what black will do is they'll go after your rook on h1. They can do that with knight g3 or with knight takes f2. Knight g3 is the most popular, and many black players think that they've caught you out because they're defending the bishop and they're forcing, uh, they're going to force the win of your rook on the next move. But in fact, here after e4, white is the one that's winning because yes, they can take a rook, but we take their bishop. We're up some material in terms of pawns already, and we have this bishop, so we're barely even down material. And on top of that, this knight has nowhere to run. So once we collect that knight over the next few moves, then uh, we're going to have a winning amount of material and black's position will be close to resignable. So therefore, in the uh, after our third move, pawn takes e5, what black should be doing is to play knight to g4. Now, at this point, we defend the pawn on e5 with knight f3. Black will typically attack it with knight to c6. But we're also going to talk about one other move, bishop to c5. That targets the pawn on f2. What we should be doing here is making sure that they don't win that pawn and after knight goes to c6, they're targeting the pawn on e5. Do not worry about trying to defend the pawn or anything like that. Just give it back and focus on development. After bishop e2, knight takes e5. We continue to focus on development with knight c3. And after castle, my suggestion, a move I think is very strong here, is knight to d4. The idea is that we're going to clear the space so that we can push the f-pawn forward and harass this knight on e5. What happens is black usually continues their development. We first castle. Black typically plays a move like a6, for example, but a lot of the time they blunder here. In fact, the most popular move online is this move bishop to e6, and white is already winning a piece. How do you win a piece? You win by playing f4. Now, if knight goes to g6, we have f5. That fork will win a piece. If the knight goes to d7, we also have f5. The bishop has nowhere to run, while if the knight takes this pawn, Yes, for now it's defended, but we can remove the defender with an attack on the queen and then we can win the knight. So the most popular move for black here of bishop e6 is already uh, going to leave you up a piece. But the second most popular, a6, might be a lot better, but after f4, black is still in trouble. Most of the time they'll go knight to g6 and that will give us free reign to continue to push the f-pawn. We go f5, knight goes to e5, and now we just keep on pushing that pawn. And black is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Why? If they go g6, this pawn is going to be a thorn in their side. We can move the knight to d5, jump it to e7. In the future, we might want to try to land our queen, you know, maybe not flying this way to h6, but certainly via e1, h4, and h6, we have these kind of ideas in mind. The position is really, really difficult for black. But if they take this pawn, it's no better for them. We can play our knight out to d5. And it's really difficult for black to defend this pawn. The only way they can do it is with knight d7. 
but now the knight is no longer covering the d3 square so we bring our bishop and as you can see from the arrows the bishop is crashing down the queen is crashing down the knight is crashing down you can check out this position for yourself if you want but white is completely winning so that's the idea against the move bishop to c5 now instead of this the main line is knight to c6 now against knight c6 we still continue with e3 we focus on development we let black win this pawn now we exchange the knights and the idea after exchanging knights is that we're now going to com calmly develop you could of course just play bishop e2 straight away but i prefer to just first chop off the knights go bishop to e2 and uh, get ready for what black's main plan is here which is bishop to b4 check after bishop b4 we block with the bishop bishop takes d2 queen takes d2 and black has succeeded in exchanging a bunch of pieces it looks as though the position might be quite uh, good for black in that sense uh, maybe an opening success but that is deceiving the reason is as we can see both sides playing natural moves here bishop e6 now we play b3 and the reason why it's deceiving is that this position here uh, is a pawn structure that is very uh, much better for white why because black struggles to really push any pawns forward without creating weaknesses whereas for us we have the e pawn and the f pawn that we're going to be able to march up the board here's an example after queen to f6 which is the most common move played at the games that i checked f4 happens now knight goes to c6 we can keep on pushing those pawns they can't take this pawn because of the uh, uh p because they would be self-pinning sorry we can we can keep on pushing the pawn they can't capture us because of the pin so they should drop the bishop back but now in comes the knight into d5 and uh, now we can continue to march the f pawn up the board so we see that recurring theme the damage that is caused from that f pawn in this final position black is stuck between a rock and a hard place again because if they play g6 or take they're in, they're certainly in a lot of trouble if they take because this bishop would fall but if they play g6 not only is this pawn a thorn in their side but the pawn on c7 is under fire while if they defend the pawn on c7 then we can take here and their king side is permanently ruined so when it comes to the moral of the story in this video i guess there are two things to say number one the budapest is quite an easy opening to get an advantage against and even a winning advantage if your opponents don't know what they're doing and number two it seems to me to be impossible for me to teach opening theory or cover any video in even close to five minutes but i'll try again next time so hope you enjoyed this video and if you did and if you'd like to see more of these quickfire videos drop a like to the video but also suggest to me what opening variation or opening system you'd like to see me cover next